Okay, so in the last video we talked about elastic collisions um, and then we were running out of time and so we switched over to a new video um, where we're going to do inelastic collisions. So right now I have them set up so that they have some hook and fuzzy uh, things to sort of make them stick together so I can make the two of them stick together. And I want to know, let's look at this collision, make a prediction. They stick together and basically they keep going with half the initial speed of the blue. Now how about if we add mass to the red and do that again. Ah. If this is three times the mass that it was, and this is the same mass, this one is going to come in with one quarter, they're going to leave with one quarter the speed that we had originally. Let's flip the masses over to the blue. Make your prediction. Ah, they don't slow down very much at all. What we're going to do is we're going to figure out mathematically that what's going to happen is the mass is going to go from 3 units to 4 units, and so the momentum is going to stay the same, so the velocity is going to go from 1 unit to 3 fourths of a unit. Not a very big change. Okay. Think about this one here. What's going to happen? Make a prediction. They basically stop in the center. Now, momentum is a vector. So, from my perspective, I'm going to say that the red has a positive momentum, and I'm going to say the blue has a negative momentum, when I take those vectors and add them together, I get that the total momentum of the system before the collision is zero kilogram meters per second. And so the momentum after the collision should also be zero, and since they're sticking together, there should be no velocity. And, you know, if I throw one a little bit faster than the other, it moves a little bit one way or the other. Okay. Put some mass on the red. Do the same thing. What's going to happen? Keeps going that way. Because now the red has more momentum than the blue does, so the red, so there's going to be a little bit of a cancellation, but the red is going to overwhelm the blue, and so overall the momentum is going to drive that way. Okay, uh, inelastic collisions, it's not a whole lot to them. The last thing I want to ask you is if you're in a car crash, this is a very, very Good question to ask of physics. If you're in a car crash, would you want to be in this collision? Or would you want to be in that collision? So collision one is inelastic. Collision two is elastic. Okay, think about which collision you'd rather be in. Okay, so here is your little bouncy head. And roughly speaking, hopefully you can see this on YouTube. Here's your head, here's the dashboard. Remember, you should always be wearing your seatbelt and hopefully you're driving a car with airbags. Um, very, very, very important. 
foot, use your head, use the dashboard, and you come along and whack. Your head rolls forward and it hits the dashboard. Let's look at that one again. Okay, so a lot of people say they don't want their head to hit the dashboard and they say, oh, you know, springy looks so nice. I want to be in springy. A lot of people that I talk to, they want to be in springy collisions. Look at what happens to the head in that collision. Okay, because basically, if you're not wearing your seatbelt and you don't have an airbag, basically your head follows Newton's first law, which says that an object in motion tends to stay in motion unless acted upon by an outside force. Now, if your head is just tracking through the car, the outside force is going to be the steering wheel of the dashboard. Now, in, in this collision, you know, sort of under extreme circumstances, in that collision, your head moving forward at, say, 30 or 40 miles per hour is going to hit a dashboard that is, say, stationary. So your head is going to go from 30 miles an hour, say, to zero miles an hour. Now, in this collision, your head is continuing to go forward while the dashboard is coming back at you. And so, in that case, your head is colliding with something that is coming at you and there's going to be a lot more um, there's going to be a lot more speed of impact uh, and so if you think about it that's why cars are designed with crumple zones because they really want your car to do that in an accident okay so now in the next couple of videos we're going to uh, sit down with some pencil and paper and analyze stuff.